Yeah, I'll do it. Can we hear me? Yes, can we hear me? We're having a full house today. Plenty of people are joining. Yes, okay. That's interesting. Let's yes, go in. Listen, how are you? Fine, sir. Lua Shei, how are you? Fine, sir. Uh, Stephen, how are you? Please, off the phone for me, uh, Abraham. Fine, sir. Okay. Uh, Trench Kid, how are you? Trench Kid, what's your, what's your, what's your name? Who is French kid? Uh, Chick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so everybody's around. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me very well. And uh, let's start. Today we're going to be looking at projector. And uh, we're going to be solving a whole lot of past questions. Okay. Please uh, confirm if you can. Can see my screen. Can we see my screen? Yes. Okay. So today we're looking at projectile motor. Uh, Chica, uh, we've done uh, measurement introduction to physics and measurements. Well, we looked at how to use uh, yes. how to use a uh, uh, micrometer screw gauge and uh, vernier calipers. We also looked at the measuring accuracies for the various uh, measuring instruments. And uh, we looked at motion and we solved all problems in motion. And I believe I've done that with you before, isn't it? Yes. Are you there? Yes, I have. Okay. So this is the next uh, topic we are doing now. And what we actually achieve every day we work on physics, we try to cover a whole topic. So the first day we looked at measurement, introduction to physics, measurement and dimension. We finished it off. The next uh, Monday we looked at motion, we finished it off. And today we're going to be looking at projectiles. And we should be able to finish up projectiles today. So do we ride on? Yes, sir. All right. OK. Projectile is an object thrown into the air and left to move under the influence of gravity. So let's say that this long uh, mark here is you, and you throw a ball like this, and it goes in this format. This ball that goes in this form is known as a projectile. It's known as a what? It's known as a projectile. OK. So I want somebody to give me an example of what, uh, a given instance of a projectile. Let's start with blessing. I can't hear example the of the word. You said? I can't hear the explanation. My network is bad. My network is bad. Okay, let me come again. A projectile is an object thrown. When you throw an object into the air, then you leave it to come down or to move under the influence of gravity. That object is known as a projectile. So give me examples of projectile that you've seen in life. Bless it. Like ball. Ball, good. Ball is a very good example of a projectile. You throw it, it moves like this, falls to gravity. So any object that moves like this and falls to gravity, that's a projectile. Chica, give me an example of a projectile. How when you throw like a stone? A stone, yeah, a stone. When you, you throw a stone, it's also a projector. Even when you release it from a catapult, it's a projector. Uh, Olua, say, give me an example of a projector. When a jet is launched into space. I didn't get you very well. But... I said when a jet is launched into space. Good. When a jet is launched into space, that's a very good example of projectile. 
So you can see all examples here. We have a bullet fired from a gun. When you fire a bullet from a gun, it moves, then gets to fall at some point. If nothing is on the on, uh, nothing is uh, uh, preventing it from moving in the direction that it wants to move. When you release a stone from a catapult, that's also a good example. So this is an example of projectile in uh, um, diagrammatic form. You can see when it, when it, even when you move in this way, you're moving from one cliff to the other, or from one to the other. You're moving in this direction. So any type of motion that has both horizontal and vertical components of it is known as a pro projectile motion. So it must have a horizontal, it's moving like this at first, then all of a sudden it's moving like this. This is the vertical component, horizontal component. So call such motion a projectile motion. This is another very typical example of a projectile motion. You see this move like this and come down. So there are components of this projectile motion that you must know about. Number one is what we call the range. <laughs> so the range is the total distance from where the projectile started to where it came down. That is the range. Maximum height is the height from the, vertically from the point zero to the topmost of where the projectile went before it got down. That is maximum height. So, so it has, there is what we call time of flight. Time of flight is the time taken for the projectile to move from this point O to the maximum height, uh, to the to, to go down and come down. Without the time to reach the maximum height is time from zero to this place. Time of flight is time from zero to this place. So these are the most important things that you need to know. And for every projectile motion, there is always the vertical and horizontal aspects of the velocity. So the vertical is uh, velocity sine theta, whereas the horizontal is velocity cos theta. Uh, check and you get these things I just mentioned now. I can hear you. Check, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So, can you mention uh, some uh, five parameters that I just mentioned concerning projectile motion? Can I mention some five five parameters that you consider when you are considering a, uh, a a projectile motion? The maximum height. Maximum height, okay. The horizontal range. The horizontal range, okay. Time of flight. Time of flight, okay. Oh yeah, Oluwase, you continue from there. Vertical component. Luashi, I'm listening to you. Luashi, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, so continue. Because don't delay our class, please. Are you there? Okay, blessing help us. I don't know what uh, wrong with that. Blessing, are you there? I'm still waiting for you. Are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, let's go. Maximum heights, horizontal components, vertical components, then. Um, angle of inclination 
Okay, okay. So uh, just looking at the diagram on in uh, front, you can see all those uh, quantities that you need. Number one is the horizontal range, and you can see the way it is uh, listed. This is the horizontal range. This is the maximum height. Apart from this horizontal range and maximum height, so I want to call time of flight, which is the total time from point zero as it climbs and climbs and gets down to this point. Let's call it time of flight. But there's also time to get to the maximum height, which is time from here to here. Then we we'll have the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity. Okay. So these are very important, and you are supposed to know their formulas. And in this slide, we are showing their formulas. So this first formula, T, is time to reach the maximum height. And the formula is simply U sine theta over G. And because you can see here, uh, time taken to reach the maximum height times two will give you a time for the whole flight. And that's why in this formula, you have time for the whole flight, which is time of flight is equal to two <laughs> U sine theta over G. That you the um, velocity. OK. So having known these two quantities, let's look at maximum height. And from the diagram, you can see that this is the maximum height. This is the maximum height. So what's the formula for calculating the maximum height? So maximum height is equal to u squared sine squared theta all over two. So this is the maximum all over two g. This is the maximum height. Then very importantly is the range which is the horizontal distance from the point of projection to the point where the projectile is the projected projection <coughs> plane again. And the formula is U squared sine two theta all over G. Then if you are considering uh, maximum range, the maximum range is considered at a point where the theta angle of projection is equal to 45. So in, in that case, using the same formula, two theta will be two times 45, which is 90. And sine 90 is 1. So making this u squared over g. So this is the formula for maximum range. So these four formulas, you're supposed to have them in your head as a student in physics wanting to write any exam that involves projectile. Number one is what? Time to reach maximum height, which is t equal to u sine theta over g. Total time of flight, T, capital letter T is equal to 2, no mm. sine theta over G. Maximum height is U squared sine squared theta all over 2G. And range is U squared times 2 theta over G. Whereas maximum range is U squared over G. So these four formulas, they are very, very important. So we're going to go through it one by one. Everybody is going to quote one formula for me so that we can get to solving past questions immediately. So we're going to be starting. I'm going to be looking at my um, at the people available, and I'm going to go line by line. So number one on the line is Chika. So Chika, what's the, what's the time to reach the maximum height? What's the formula for time to reach the maximum height? T U sine theta over G. Come again. T equals to two u sine theta over g. No, 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 you're wrong. You can help us out. H equals to u squared sine squared theta over two g. No, 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 no. Who said that? So you're very wrong, Stephen. Let's uh, before you answer, let me know. Is you that wants to? So Stephen, come help us. Time to reach the maximum height. <laughs> Oh, so I thought you said time of flight. No, no, I said time to reach the maximum height. U square sine theta square over 2G. U sine no, 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 theta no, over very wrong. Oh, yeah, Chika, you've you gotten it now. So can you tell us now? Time to reach the maximum height. U sine theta over G. Come again. I, I'm not getting you very well. U sine theta over C. U sine theta over C. The first formula is here. I don't know why you guys are getting it confused. It's already here. This is the time to reach the maximum height. You can see it clearly. Written. So, Lua, what is the time of flight? The formula for time of flight. C equals to 2U sine theta over G. 
to t equal to two u side theta over g. The difference is that the time to reach the maximum height, if you double it, if you multiply it by two, it gives you the total time of flight. And if you look at this, this is the time taken to go from here to here is the time to reach the maximum height. Whereas time of flight is the time taken from here, up here and down here. So two times the time to reach the maximum height is the time for the total flight. Okay, so Stephen, what's the formula for the maximum height? U square. Sign. Yes, if you we cannot get you very well, come again. U square. Open bracket, sine theta, close bracket, square, all over 2G. This is the uh, formula for the maximum height, U square sine square theta, all over 2G. Then, Choma, can you help us with the formula for range? Choma Buchi, we are waiting for you. Jama Buti, are you there? U square sine theta all over G. Come again. U square sine two theta all over G. Okay. U square sine two theta over G. And if it is for maximum range, it becomes uh, U squared over G. So please take note of these formulas. It's important that you know that all of them are having just G as the denominator. All of them are having just G as the denominator, G. The only one that has two G is the maximum height. And also it is this maximum height that has two G is also only it that has sine squared. Other ones are having just sine theta, sine theta. The range is having sine two theta. But it's only this one that is having sine squared theta together with the velocity, which is also squared. So take note of these in the formulas, okay? So let's take an, a, an example. So we have a projector is fired with initial velocity of 100 meter per second at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Calculate A, the time of flight, B, the maximum height, and C, the range. Uh, can we articulate this? I think this is not a... It's not a difficult question, is it? The formulas are just given. So uh, time of flight, that's the first thing. Time of flight, we know is equal to two u sine theta over g. So you just impute all the formulas. U is equal to 100. <laughs> so if you make it out, you're gonna get 10 meter per second. Maximum height is u squared sine squared theta over g, 2g. So if you put all these, you're going to get it. Whereas range is u squared sine 2 theta over g. And that gives you this. So I believe this is uh, easy to understand with the formulas, provided you took note of these formulas. Chika, is it, is it easy? Yes, I did. OK, Uluwashi, is it easy? Yes, sir. Uchi. Can it be understood? Chairman Bucci, can it be understood? Yes, sir, very understood. Okay, so let's move forward to actual questions from JAM past questions. So this is JAM 2015 physics, question number 28. A tire is fired from ground with a velocity of 300 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees, please, this is 30 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the time to reach the maximum height. This is time to reach the maximum height. This, this is not time of flight. Time of flight is simply two times time to reach the maximum height. And we know that time to reach the maximum height is simply U sine theta over G, that's the formula. But if they had 
asked you what is the time of flight, it would have been two u sine theta over g. So with this, the answer is simply t equal to u sine theta over g. So u is 300 as is given, sine 30, then all over 10. This gives us 15 seconds. I don't know whether this is clear. Tick clear. Yes, sir. Luasha, is this clear? Yes, sir. Uchi? Yes, sir, it's clear. Oh, Stephen, is it clear? Okay, let's look at next question. Uh, a ball projects is projected horizontally from the top of a hill with a velocity of 20. If it reaches the ground four seconds later, what is the height of the hill? Okay, a ball is projected horizontally from the top of a hill. So that means that the initial velocity is zero. So in this case, you can, uh, if it is a motion under gravity, you can also have the height to be equal to half gt squared, half gt squared for motion. under gravity, okay? I think I did not uh, show you. Yeah. So while I open up, I, I, can you guys see a new slide that has physics? Let me make sure you're seeing my slide. Which slide are we seeing now? Time of flight range. Yeah. Please let me know if you start seeing a new slide that has physics as the... I can see it. Okay. I want to show you guys other formulas that uh, are very important. <laughs> yeah, so I want all of us to write the five formulas that I just stated for projector. Everybody's going to read it out for me. First one is the time to get to the maximum height, time of flight. Formula for maximum height, formula for range, and formula for maximum range. So write it in your paper. Everybody submit on the group chart. Let me see the four formulas for projector. Like I said, you're supposed to have them in your head. They are most likely going to be coming out. So they are simple formulas that you need to memorize together with the equations of motion. Okay. Yeah. Look at the assignment. The assignment is give me the three basic equations of motion and the four equations of projectiles. So we are uh, not see. You said? We can't see the assignment on the board. The assignment? No, I'm not, yes, the assignment like, is not, it's not written on the board. I'm just saying it with my mouth now. I say, write it on your paper, the paper you're using now. Okay. The assignment goes like this. Give me the four basic equations of motion, as I gave in the last class. Then give me the five basic formulas of projectile. Once you're done, you write your name. You snap, just write it on a piece of paper, snap, and send it to the WhatsApp group. Any of the WhatsApp group that you belong. If you belong to the special group, send there, but if you belong to the uh, general group, also send there. Let me see them. Okay. So once I sign off, I want to see that. Okay. Okay. So you can see here, we have that uh, this is a motion of a body in parabolic path. That is a projectile motion. 
And these are the examples. Number one example of a projectile motion, because Jump is gonna ask you which of the following is not an example of projectile motion. So take note, a thrown rubber ball rebounding from a wall is an example of a projectile motion. An athlete doing the high jump. So high jump, all of us know what high jump is. Chika, do you know what they call high jump? Yes, you I know do. that jump that people run. Bang, 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 they don't. Pew. You know the jump. Yes. You watch Olympics. Yes, Olympics. sir. You watch Olympics. Somebody runs. Pa 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 pa. He jumps. That's high jump. Then you have a stone released from a catapult. Release a stone from a catapult. That's a projectile motion. Then you have a bullet fired from a gun. It's also an example of a projectile motion. Okay, these are the formulas. Can you see the formulas? Chica, can you see the formulas? Okay, this is time of flight, 2u sine theta over g. Whereas the time to reach the maximum height is just u sine theta over g. Um, then this is range. U squared sine 2 theta over g. Then for maximum range, formula. So these are just the formula that I just gave you. This is the maximum height formula. U squared sine squared theta over 2g. Can you see that, Chika? Yes. And these are the applications of projectile motion. So uh, another very important thing, Jam is going to ask you, what are the applications of projectile motion? So number one, many mixiles travel from one point to another following a parabolic path. Number two, the nozzle of a gun rocket launcher is set according to a bomber plane. It's also a very good application of projectile motion. Okay. So these are examples of motions under gravity. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, dropping some projectile motion problems, soft problems in our group chat. So once you uh, once after this class, check it out. I'm gonna be dropping most of them. It's handwritten, so I'll be putting them up there for you to see, and. Uh, <laughs> So, Chica, are you listening to me now? Yes, I'm listening to you. So, in chemistry, we've looked at separation techniques and introduction to chemistry. And we'll solve some problems in separation techniques. So, and yeah. I, I believe I've, I've also looked at separation techniques with you, isn't it? Yes, I will. Okay. Then we'll, after that, we looked at uh, laws of chemical uh, combination, where we looked at law of multiple proportion, uh, law of conservation of uh, matter and the rest. And I believe I also looked at that with you, have I? Yes, I have looked at that. Okay. So those are the things we've done so far. I did not get you. Are we moving to chemistry now? Like no, no, no. Chemistry, we'll do chemistry tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so if you look at uh, my, my wall now, you're going to see some questions that I'm just pasting there. Okay. So those are projectile motion problems. I'm going to push them to our group chats. So please, I want everybody to look at it critically. If you have any questions on them, you can ask me. Uh, so that we can look at them together.
Are we seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So these are very simple problems. Very, very simple problems. So what is going to happen is that once I stop this slide, I will expect to get your the answers to your assignment. So once I get those answers, then you can start answering these uh, projectile problems. Are we okay with that? That's your idea. So what I say is that once I log off from this class, yes. I'm going to expect uh, your answers, the answers to the pro assignment I gave you, which are the three basic laws or uh, basic equations of motion. Okay. Then, the five uh, formulas to the projectile, then you send them to me. Who can answer the question that is uh, currently on my screen now? Somebody should try it out. Equation of motion. P is so equal to U plus. Hmm? Who can attempt that? So the answer will be C. C, but because that's yeah. the time taken to reach the maximum might, Abby. Yes. So what if they had asked, what is the maximum height? What would have been the answer? It could be B. B would have been the answer, yeah. And if they had asked, what is the range? What would have been the answer? The answer won't be there. The range? Yeah, it's not there because it's supposed to be two, two theta B. Yes. Okay, you can see that uh, Chica is following up very well. I don't know why others are not following up. And that's why I gave that assignment so that you can quickly look at those formulas to come out they must do what hmm? they must do they must come out in your exams so the earlier you start trying to memorize them or try to get hold of them the better Okay, so uh, who can tell me the uh, the angle of inclination needed for there to be maximum range? Who can so tell me that? What's the angle of inclination needed to have range? Angle forty-five. Forty-five. Thank you, Uchi. Nice one. So see you guys when I see you. Just log on to the group chat, submit the assignments, and you get the you get uh, the, these uh, exercises and look at them and answer me. Okay, Thank bye. You. See you. Thank you, sir.